Hey everybody! This is Death by D4, and welcome to my guide on how to play as the Necromancy Wizard subclass in Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition. There's a lot to go over, so be sure to subscribe and let's dive right on in. When you take this subclass at second level, you get Necromancy Savant, which halves the time and cost that it takes for you to copy a Necromancy spell into your spellbook. Certainly a convenient feature for you to get, but unfortunately not one worth getting all that excited over. You also get Grim Harvest at 3rd level, which allows you to regain hit points whenever you kill a creature with a leveled spell once per turn. If the spell you cast happens to be a necromancy spell, then you regain hit points equal to 3 times the spell's level. Otherwise, you only regain hit points equal to 2 times the spell's level. Oh, and uh, you also cannot kill a construct or an undead in order to gain the effect of this feature. So, I'm not gonna lie, but I don't really think that this feature is all that good. Yes, it is nice to receive a little bit of extra healing whenever you kill something with one of your spells, but it's not like the healing that you're gonna receive is gonna be all that good in order to sustain your wizard in the midst of battle. Not only that, but the selection of necromancy spells made available to you early on for this feature are just terrible, as the only first level damaging necromancy spell that there is is Ray of Sickness, and the next available one that you get is Vampiric Touch, which is a third level spell. Thankfully, this feature does also work with the other schools of magic as well, and there's some really awesome damaging necromancy spells once you reach higher levels. However, with just how weak this feature scales overall, coupled with the poor selection of spells made available to you early on, you're likely not going to get a lot of use out of this until much later. Definitely a really nice feature for you to have, though not a great one overall. At 6th level, you get Undead Thralls, which adds the Animate Dead spell to your spellbook for free. Also, you can summon one additional zombie or skeleton whenever you cast the Animate Dead spell. Finally, any undead that you summon using a necromancy spell has its maximum hit points increased by your wizard's level, and can add your proficiency bonus to any of its damage rolls. Wow! So at this point, you're basically just a full-blown necromancer, and can summon forth your venerable horde of the undead to do your bidding. However, you do need to keep in mind the limitations of the animate dead spells so that way you don't end up becoming a victim of your own horde. However, despite your reanimated dead being permanent, you will need to cast the spell again after 24 hours or you'll end up losing control over them, though thankfully you only need to expend one use of the spell to make control over four separate undead at once. With that in mind, that means you can already control up to 12 undead at this point, with the absolute maximum that you can control being up to 18. Damn. I'm not gonna lie, but being able to control this many minions at once at this level is kind of insane. Not only that, but remember that all of these undead have increased hit points and damage as well, making them a fairly decent force to be reckoned with. Seriously, just wow! I don't even care if they're just low-level zombies and skeletons at this point. Just having this many of them under your control is absolutely absurd. Yes, it will take you quite a lot of time in order to gather your undead forces, and managing them will end up consuming most of your higher-level spell slots. But there's just no way that this isn't going to be useful for you once you've done it all. Definitely a very niche feature for you to get in general, but one that does a great job of enabling you to play as the subclass's unique character theme. At 10th level you get Inured to Undeath, which grants you resistance to necrotic damage and prevents you from ever having your hit point total decreased. Certainly not a crazy feature by any stretch of the imagination, but still a nice one to have overall. Finally, at 14th level, you get Command Undead, which allows you to use your action to target an undead creature that you can see within 60 feet of you. That creature must then succeed on a Charisma saving throw against your spell save DC, or permanently fall underneath your control until you use this feature again. However, undead with an intelligence score of 8 or higher gain advantage on their saving throw against it, and undead of an intelligence score of 12 or higher can reattempt the saving throw every hour. Okay, so this feature is absolutely ridiculous. First of all, there is no limit to the amount of times that you can use this feature, only that you can maintain it on only one creature at a time and that you can only attempt it on any one creature in particular once. That may be a bit extreme, but the fact that this can technically work on any undead at all is just absolutely absurd, because there are some seriously powerful undead creatures out there, and lots of them do not have an intelligence score higher than 8. That means that you could very well end up recruiting an insanely powerful undead creature to your army out of nowhere, and that's just insane! Heck, even if you only temporarily gain control of the creature, that control still lasts for a minimum of an hour, and that's more than enough time to completely change the outcome of a battle. Seriously, just wow. Though it's very much an all or nothing kind of feature, its possible payoff is just so incredible that there's just no way I can embrace it. Easily one of the best features I can imagine for a necromancer, and one more than worthy of being the capstorm feature for this particular subclass. Alright, so that does it for all the subclass features, now on to just a few of my own personal recommendations concerning it. First off, when you're choosing a race, since the subclass relies so heavily on its spell slots in order to maintain control over its minions, I would highly recommend playing as an elf. 
as the ability for you to regain all of your spell slots in half the usual time is just incredible for you. Yes, an elf is already an amazing pick for the wizard class in general, but this is especially true since you have such a strict schedule that you have to adhere to in order to maintain control over your undead. So anything that makes that even easier for you is just greatly appreciated. Next, let's talk about spells. Now, as a necromancer, there are actually a few spells besides Animate Dead that you should try and pay attention to. Dance Macabre allows you to summon up to 5 zombies or skeletons that remain animated for as long as you maintain concentration on the spell. However, the undead that you summon in this way gain a bonus to their attack and damage rolls equal to your spellcasting modifier, meaning that they're going to be even more powerful than your typical undead. Either way, just keep the spell in mind as it works wonderfully well in the middle of battle. Create Undead allows you to use some costly material components in order to summon even more powerful undead creatures. These creatures include the Ghoul, Ghast, White, and Mummy, all of which are a whole lot more useful than your standard skeletons and zombies. Just keep in mind that you'll need to recast the spell every 24 hours, just like with Animate Dead, in order to maintain control over them. That said, at least the material components required for this spell are not consumed when you cast it, so maintaining the spell is actually a lot easier than it seems. Of all the creatures that you can summon, I'm going to give a special shout out to the Whites, as the White can permanently summon a zombie for each foe that it slays, up to a maximum of 12 controlled each. Seriously, if you can do this, then this will really help bolster up the power and numbers of your undead ranks quite considerably. And finally, there's Finger of Death, which is a hilariously powerful necromancy spell that actually turns any humanoid that you kill with it into a zombie permanently under your control. Yes, you heard me right, permanently. So if you have infinite free time, and people that you're readily available to kill, then just go to town with it because this is a spell that you can use to amass a near infinite number of zombies for yourself. Finally, allow me to just talk briefly about roleplaying yourself as a necromancer. Now, of course, the traditional mindset applied to a necromancer is that they're these heartless, evil people that just want to use their dark powers to rule the world with their undead minions. That said, typically when you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, you're playing as a hero, which can make things rather difficult for you if you're playing as a necromancer and trying not to be hated by everybody. However, if you're interested in trying to play as a necromancer and want to try and play as a heroic character, then there are definitely some things that you can do in order to spin your character into a better light. Your character could simply have an intellectual intrigue with the nature of life and death, and otherwise be a totally normal person outside of that towards society. Or maybe you've embraced your necromatic practices in hopes of protecting the living against some kind of greater evil. Perhaps your necromancer lost someone important to them, and now strives to improve their abilities in order to bring them back to life. Or perhaps they simply come from a culturally different background, where the animation of the dead isn't seen as some kind of great heresy. Whatever it is that you end up deciding on, just know that there's always a way for you to play your character in a way that is suitable for everybody else around you, both in terms of character and for your friends at the table. And that's it! If you liked the video, then be sure to subscribe and let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you'd like to have the chance to play D&D with me, then feel free to join my Discord server, and consider supporting me over on Patreon! Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next video!